Everyone, this is Ross, and in this video, we're gonna be reviewing a fig that is my most anticipated fig out of all the varieties I grow here in Pennsylvania. This is the one that I've been looking forward to the most. And I think it has the most potential here to do really well, to taste really good, to be a very hardy tree, to put up with our rain, to put up with our bad season. This is the fig, it's called Campaneri. And it comes from France, guys. And I wanna to talk to you guys about the fruit itself. We're gonna do a taste test at the end. But I wanna show you guys the trees and, and where I've planted them, because I've made many copies of this, because I have so many, such high hopes for it, that I've made many copies and placed them at different places in the yard. And I've also grafted some. We have some in pots. We have some in, um, in the ground. I just have very high hopes for it. Here's the tree that we actually just picked this off of. And it, it actually came off of this tree right after the rain that we had gotten um, from the hurricane. A little bit of the effects of the hurricane that came in here. Um, the one that hit North Carolina, the one that hit the Bahamas uh, of 2019. Uh, I forget the name of it, but here you can see the tree that we've, we actually grafted onto this rootstock. Um, I did the cleft graft. You can see the, the graft uh, union right here. It's on really not the most vigorous, healthy, or even the strongest or oldest rootstock. But I have a feeling because you graft these trees onto an older tree, yeah, this part of the wood, the new wood here is not really the, uh, the oldest, but this is a pretty good representation of what the fruit um, you know, is gonna show me in the future. Um, you can see the leaf structure here. It's got a really, really nice feel to it. It's got that sandpaper type leaves, um, that furry type leaves that actually the hardy Chicago types have, which is one right next to it. This is my Azores Dark right next to it. And believe it or not, it actually has a similar-ish leaf pattern too. And I wonder if they're related. I, I have a feeling, I have a theory that leaves that have, or trees that have these types of leaves seem to just be a bit more hardy or maybe a bit more resilient. I don't know exactly how to put it, but you can see another graft over here, what we did, we grafted this tree as well. Um, and in fact, I actually have it grafted on to a rootstock that's very vigorous. So we'll see if that aids in any difference between the two different trees here. But I also grafted on the same tree, um, Smith. So we'll see if there's any different, you know, little differences there between them. But the point is, this is a very old variety. That was kind of what I was getting at here, is that this is a very old variety from France. And these old varieties like Hardy Chicago, like Fico Love, like Moro de Caneva, figs that are over 100 years old, even approaching maybe, you know, Moro de Caneva, I think, if I'm not mistaken, they think that tree is at least three, I think 300 to 400 years old or something crazy. Um, you know, there's really old trees out there, and when they're old like that, they just really adapt well to those locations. They have spent so much time there, they've almost sort of, in a way, evolved in those locations. Just like us and how we're evolving with technology, these figs are also evolving in their locations. Not Probably not as quick as us in terms of the technological change, the changes that are happening, but... Um, Nonetheless, if you guys plant a fig in your location and have it there for about 5, 10, 20 years, it's going to change every year. It's going to get a little bit more adapted to your location. It's going to be able to put up with those conditions. It's kind of the beauty of it. Um, so that's kind of another reason why I've been so hyped up and really excited for this fig. Um, it comes from France, and if anyone knows anything about the climate in France, and also the climate here is that, let me tell you right now, is that we have a really severe winter. We have a severe summer, so it goes from really cold to really hot. We get to about 100 degrees here in the summer, 100 degrees Fahrenheit. We also get uh, lots of humidity. We get cooler springs and a cooler fall, and lots of rain that comes in. So we have a humid climate. We live in a temperate place. We live in a, a place that's not very dry. And if anyone knows anything about France is that they have a pretty humid climate as well. Um, you know, it rains in their falls. It rains in parts of their summer, uh, at the end of their summer. Their fig season sort of ends in October. 
you know, they have a more mild climate than us. They have more mild temperatures in the wintertime, but also more mild temperatures in the summertime. So they're really, in my opinion, the best source of, of genetics from anywhere else in the world. Um, you know, I think a lot of people have biases towards different countries. You know, I'm Italian, so I love Italian figs. Or somebody else might be from the Middle East and they love Middle Eastern figs, you know. But I really do believe that these French figs have some sort of edge here in this climate. Out of the varieties that I grow, a large majority of them that do well here are from France. And I've specifically chosen that to put in a lot of research and time and energy into the researching these French figs to find out which ones of these would really do well here. And that's the conclusion I came to, is that Camp Maniri is one that is very old, it's adapted well, and has survived all the elements. It's survived, you know, 100-year colds, 20-year colds, 50-year colds. In fact, very recently, I think in 2012, Camp Maniri has survived negative four degrees Fahrenheit with no damage. That is unheard of, that is ridiculous. Um, so for that reason, I've gone out of my way to get as many cuttings, as many plants of this as I possibly could. And I planted them everywhere. Here's one right here that we planted in the ground. We just literally stuck a cutting in the ground. And this is the, actually the top of the cutting. We had a, another limb here that actually broke off but it's grown from this top node here into a pretty nice sized tree. And what I can do is take cuttings off of this and what I'll probably have to do for the first year like most of these is cut these guys back um, and then cover them just to ensure that the base is protected. Let me show you guys a couple more trees right now. I have, believe it or not, two in the front um, planted out in the open that are not going to get, I think, any protection. I think I'm deciding the ones in the front, we're just going to see how they do in the wintertime. If, if indeed they are as hardy as they should be. But you know what? These figs guys are not going to survive the first year, most of them. When you plant them in the ground, they need some time to really dig in. And a really severe winter is not going to help them do that. They really need some time more of a mild winter in that first year and that would really help them out so i may protect the base on some of these i'm not sure but um, we also have another tree right here this is a, another campanieri this is one that i had actually bought bought this one from a friend as a plant and um, it's actually doing quite well you can see it's almost really the same size but you can see it's hardened up well it didn't really fruit you can see that there's some figs and really small figs that are forming on their own um, but it really is the same size as that tree that we had just looked at that i just stuck a cutting in the ground i also had one over here that unfortunately got stepped on it was growing quite vigorously but that one because we stepped on it it died it's a you know a bit unfortunate i did have one excuse me guys i did have one right here that was labeled as campanieri or it was supposed to be campanieri and indeed this is in something else and you can tell the leaf pattern looks quite similar doesn't it um but this is another french fig called la magdalene that i've come to the conclusion that this is actually a very different fig even though it looks similar um, so this one was mislabeled that I also bought from a friend. But we have two more in the front that I want to show you guys. Um, but maybe we'll save those for another time. There's two in the front that honestly, one we just stuck a cutting in the ground, looks just like these other ones here. And what's nice about this variety, it seems like, is that it doesn't grow so vigorously. It grows quite slowly, it seems. It doesn't put out this really lanky growth like other varieties are that I think that's maybe probably where the hardiness is coming from. Like this variety grew so quickly that this wood is green and still pliable. And this is not gonna do well in the winter time. Whereas if you look at this variety, it's pretty much all hardened up. It's all ready to go. If, the, if a freeze, a hard freeze were to come in tomorrow, you know, you would see exactly that this fig would actually do pretty well, you know, whereas all these other ones 
I mean, look at that. It's just not a characteristic that you really want in these figs. And that's why I've taken off the tips and tried to slow down the growth on some of these trees. Um, so I have a feeling that's a big part of why Campaneri is indeed as hardy as it is. Um, you know, there's very few trees that I have at this moment that are in the ground that have completely fully hardened wood. That just is it's kind of unheard of, to be honest with you. So I'm excited for this one. It definitely has good rain resistance so far here in my climate. Definitely has good rain resistance in France. It's very early, by the way. We didn't mention that, but it's one of the earliest figs that grows in France in a collector's collection who found this fig in Thierry uh, Figs of the World. This is one of his earlier figs that ripens in August for him, um, early August or late July in France, which is a, a very early variety. He highly regards it for flavor. He also mentions that um, the data there that on its hardiness surviving negative four degrees Fahrenheit. You can go online and actually read all about it on his website. Maybe I'll put a link to that in the description. Um, so I've just been really excited. We made many copies of this, try to get as many plants as I could. I have air layers on different trees to see if we can get more of them. And uh, yeah, this is just one that I'm really, really excited for. And I'm gonna taste it now and talk to you guys a little bit about the flavor. Cause it's not just enough, in my opinion, to have a fig that will survive the winter here. But then again, well, excuse me guys. <laughs> it's not just enough to have a fig that will survive the winter, but although if it does survive the winter, that's incredible on its own. I mean, that is just in its own right. I mean, an absolute winner. Everybody should have that fig, right? But what if it was also extremely tasty? And that is honestly what I'm picking up here with this particular beauty. You can see the backside. It's got a yellow skin, but it's starting to get dark, which I imagine when it matures a bit more should finally finish itself out. It should become a more of a gray color, more of a purplish color. But I think this is more of the base color of the fig. Again, you can all check this out on Thierry's website and the inside is a dark red. And uh, what I've noticed, it's got a really nice pulp, a dense jammy pulp to it. And it's also got a nice wine berry flavor. It stings your tongue a little bit. It gives you that nice lingering flavor on your palate. Um, it reminds me a lot of a Col de Dom flavor. The flavor is a similar fig to a Col de Dom. It's got the jamminess of the Col de Dom, but it's not as dense. I don't want to mislead you guys there, but it's very jammy. It's very good. For the first fig off of that tree, of that variety that I've ever tried, it's already a four, which is un unbelievable. Um, in fact, I may even, I would say it's a four and a half out of five. Um, very few figs I think can beat that guys. That is really, really good. So this fig has got it all, I'm telling you. And that's why I've been making so many copies of it. You know, I've been making copies of very few figs right now. Um, especially after seeing what is kind of transpiring this season. Um, I had, you know, big plans coming into the season of what I was going to grow and what I was going to make copies of and why I was going to do that. Um, some things had changed, some things I went in some other different directions, but it seems like to me, um, you know, that's going to be the best one. I had said in the past that my best overall fig was Smith. And I think that is tastier than Smith and it should perform a lot better than Smith. So, um, yeah, I'm real excited guys to have found a fig better than Smith overall is like incredible. Um, I want to take you guys around now and show you guys some of the figs that I've been, I've been propagating. I think that's a worthwhile endeavor here. Cause I think some of you guys are going to want to want this information for yourself. Um, you know, my friend Raphael really loves this fig here called white Madeira number one. And we've been trying to find a Col de Dom replacement. That was been our big goal here. 
Um, you know what? I think I'm going to do this in a separate video for you guys. Here's a nice little Col de Dom Blanc right here. What a beauty. Actually, a lot of cracking from this change in temperatures that we've been getting here. And then also nice Cavalieri back here that I'm, I'm hoping to pick. But I'm going to let it hang a little bit longer. But anyway, we're going to make, I think we're going to make a separate video for you guys on that, talking about what it is that I'm transitioning into. I still have more figs to try, so maybe I'll just save this video for the end of the season. I don't know. But I'm pretty convinced on a number of figs here of what it is that I like. And I had a friend over today. We had plates. We had a, two plates of figs here trying different varieties, and it was obvious to him. It was obvious to me, you know, what it is that's better and what it is that's not up to the standard of some of these other figs like the one I just had. It's still on my tongue, that Campanieri. So I'm really excited, guys, to have found such a fig and to present such a fig to you guys, to really endorse it. Um, I think it's something a bit special. I wish I had found it. I mean, the Thierry, the guy who found it, really deserves all the credit. I mean, that is like, uh, it's just incredible to find something like that. So, you know, it just goes to show you never know what's around you until you look. Um, I wish I could go around. I lived in an area with the wasp, with the blastophaga, uh, or in an area close to the blastophaga, and... Um, find myself some wild figs but it's just not the case so all right guys we'll talk to you all soon all right take care catch you for tomorrow's video